Oh, good. Enjoy. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. How are you? Oh, good. Everybody there. Hi, Stephen. Are you in Fort Myers? I am. It is. It's really? worse than anything you've seen on the news. Really? That's why don't you why don't you tell us a little about that before? I'm just so curious how your oh. house especially is. So so my neighborhood is just a little bit higher elevation than all around me. So my house was fine and you know the outside pool cage, trees down water came right up into the garage and almost into the house. Um, but other than that, perfectly fine and grateful for that. But all around me, the street behind me, four feet of water, um, there are still several thousands and thousands of people without power, water, sewer. Um, the surge on Fort Myers Beach was 25 feet um, and it came so fast. We haven't even seen some of the, um, the, 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 the footage of places like Sanibel and Captiva, Pine Island because the roads are impassable. Um, they're not letting anybody onto Sanibel or Captiva um, and they're they're lifting people out of Pine Island, which is off the um, Cape Coral coast. Um, there's the, the grid, um, at the, there is many places um, that are without power that the grid, it's not a matter of recovering, it has to get rebuilt. Mm -hmm. There are thousands and thousands of people that are displaced. Um, you know, they've lost everything, everything, car, IDs, they don't even have IDs to prove who they are. So it's um, it's uh, it, it's surreal for sure, for sure. Um, well, I'm so I'm so glad you are not in in that place because it seems like you have internet. It seems like you have power. You said, and your 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 belongings are not destroyed and moldy and wet. Exactly. Exactly. Um, all of my utilities are underground, um, but that's not the case in many areas of Fort Myers and Cape Coral. So they're still, that's one of the reasons why there's still, um, there's still a, a delay in getting any power. Um, tomorrow I've, I've signed up with an organization called Cajun Navy to, um, for volunteer efforts. And because there's no way that I can sit here and not do anything. So, you know, I'm a great administrator. I can help people fill out FEMA <laughs> applications. <laughs> so anyway, I'll keep you posted as this progresses. Um, Stephen, I don't know if you've got a house out on, on, on Sanibel. I, no, it's, it's gone. Is it gone? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I've got a couple um, very good friends who have houses down there. They're on their way down. Um, they've, got, they've, they've got a pirate to take them out to, Cap, uh, to Sanibel to have them take a look at their houses, but we'll see how they do. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, with that, I'll call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone. Welcome Susan Corbett, our guest. Uh, let's just open with uh, public comment. Let's see if there's any comments from the public here. Does anyone have any comments from the public uh, they wanna bring, bring to the committee? Okay. Seeing none, let's move on to the approval of the minutes from July 14th of this year. Move oh. that we approve the minutes. Dave. Motion moved by Dave. Second. Seconded by Stephen. Any discussion? Good job, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, I gotta be careful what we say. <laughs> <laughs> He cleans it up for us. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything, almost everything gets in. But, you know, it's recorded anyway, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, but nobody watches that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think they read these? <laughs> uh, if there's no further discussion, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Michael, how do you vote? Uh, uh, I approve. Yes. Okay. Carol? Yes. Okay. Stephen? Yes. 
Yes, yes, and I vote yes, it's unanimous. Okay, and next is discussion with Susan Corbett about Lincolnville's digital equity and digital inclusion plan. Susan, you have the floor. <clears throat> Oh, no. oh, there's... Susan, you've got the floor. You'll have to unmute. <clears throat> You're on mute. We're going to try to change networks. So I'll hang on one quick second. Okay. Maybe we can look at baby pictures while we wait, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring them up. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sorry about that. No problem, Susan, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me for tonight's meeting. And I'm excited to start to work with all of you and helping you um, create a digital equity and digital inclusion plan. Um, there is, I'm going to bring up the scope of services in just a moment. Um, but just so so this is our kickoff meeting this plan is about lincolnville and all of you my job is to facilitate and to help you build your plan it's not my plan it's your plan so we're going to have um we're going to meet several times over the next couple of months just so that we can start talking through what is that what is this going to look like what are the what are the things that are important um to the committee um for some communities that do digital equity and digital inclusion plans, it might mean that they're focusing on the older adults in their community, or they're focusing on the students. Um, perhaps uh, the, the, the community wants to um, do more around telehealth um, issues. So those are the things we're gonna sort of talk about and, and, and um, flesh out over the next couple of months. Um, as we start to build this plan. So, um, but just to remember, it's your plan and you're gonna, you're, you're all, we're all gonna do this together. So I think I, had, I can share screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Great. All right, so th this is the attachment um, on the letter of agreement that you all signed. And this is what this is the, the components of how do you build that digital equity plan. So the first thing that we're going to do on at the National Digital Equity Center is to a deep dive into the demographics of Lincolnville. We're going to look at things like um, uh, income, uh, family median income and um, educational attainment and the number of families that are um, that meet the federal poverty guidelines. And by doing that, it sort of sets the tone of what what we need to address as we go forward with that digital equity plan. An example of that is if we're if we find that 25% of the homes in Lincolnville have a family median income of 34, nine or less, then that could be an issue uh, as you start to build a better um, broadband system in Lincolnville and, um, and, you're, and, and so can everybody afford that internet connection? And so those are the things that will address uh, the demographics will help us, um, help us figure that out. Um, our next meeting that we have, and what I'd like to do is to, uh, to schedule something before the end of this meeting sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, and we will review those demographics so you can actually see exactly what we're seeing and, um, and then begin to move forward. When we, when we create the plan, we need, to we need to address certain components. We need to address what is the plan for affordable broadband? What is the plan for affordable devices? What is the plan for digital skills training? And what is the, the plan for public computer access? Um, there may be several solutions for each of those, but there may be budget that we build into some of this and money that you may wanna raise to, to meet um, some of the objectives that we put into the plan. Um, but these are the things to sort of start to think about and wrap your heads around, right? Well, you know, when we talk about affordable broadband, what are we talking about? Um, 
One thing with affordable broadband, we do have the FCC affordable connectivity program. Um, that program is in effect now for families that meet the income eligibility guidelines on that, they can receive a $30 per month discount. Um, the providers here in Maine are all eligible providers under the um, um, FCC program. Um, and so uh, as we go move forward, we may talk about starting to do some of those classes in Lincolnville to start getting people on board and um, applying for that benefit, but just something just to think about as we go forward. Um, affordable equipment, um, very, some, some communities will raise funds for a lending library that, um, that they can loan devices out. Others will raise funds for some of the older adults in the community. So again, just things to start to think about as we um, build up and start to build your plan. Um, the National Digital Equity Center um, provides free digital skills training to all Maine residents. There are over 40 classes that are available um, to all, um, all Maine residents. People can take as many classes as they wish. Um, there's two ways that they can do that. We have the classes are online, interactive. Their classes are small. There's usually no more than 10 to a class. Um, the instructor, um, the, the student can connect to the instructor via Zoom. There's also a program that we have that is called the Partner On-Site Program. And we have over 50 organizations, and there's probably about that many in the, in the queue to, to be trained and get online with us. But these are locations that will have, there are organizations that will have students at their location and have um, um, provide a facilitator, um, bring students around a table in a, um, a public place. We bring the instructor in over Zoom, but the facilitator is helping those that are in that, in, in, at that location. We have a lot of town offices that decide they wanna be partner on site. And usually the, there's a couple that the classes that they like to do. One is that FCC affordable connectivity program. And if you're looking at a fiber to the home um, solution, one of the classes that we have is cutting the cord. So how do you, if you, if you go from satellite or um, um, uh, cable TV, how do you do video streaming? What happens with the remote control? How do you, um, all of these, these devices, all of these services that are out there. So we have a class on that. So if you're looking at a fiber to the home solution, you're gonna wanna hold that class so that you can get people um, um, utilizing that really good bro robust broadband solution. Um, we can train people. We do a lot, we train, the, certainly we train the facilitators at a location. Um, some communities have more than one location, it's perfectly fine. Um, and you know the, the the facilitators or the whoever is going to be teaching the classes um, will teach them as much as they're willing to learn, and um, and then you have somebody local in your community that's able to to assist some of your um, community members. Um, I'm going to stop sharing because I just gave you an awful lot of information. So what I'd like to do is just sort of open it up and have you ask questions and. Um, let's have a, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Yeah, Stephen. Um, what is the source of the demographic data? We use the American Community Survey data and we, um, we subscribe to a company so that we can get the latest information in, in a very good format. Um, right now we're looking at 2021 um survey data um, this is all u.s census data um, and in addition to just the basic gener um, demographics we also um, have a data set that we can look at um, broadband adoption how many homes um, subscribe to broadband it doesn't mean it's good broadband let me just do that as a disclaimer right but how many homes subscribe to broadband how many homes have a computer so we'll, when we do the demographics for Lincolnville, we're going to dig into that. Um, and and when, when we bring it back to you, 
it's going to be broken down by ages, whether there's children in the home, um, and it, you'll be you'll be surprised when you see some of the data that comes out. Yeah, Jay. Uh, where do you get the data for for who has a computer and that sort of thing? The American Community Survey U.S. Census data has been the, tracking the, that over the, the last. Census has been. Hmm. The census has been tracking that. The US that. Census has been tracking that, yes. Hmm. Yes. Right. Interesting what I've seen in the in the shift from the last demographics, which was a couple years before, to the new demographics. We're see, I'm seeing we're seeing a lot of families with children um, in the home under 18. There's a computer in the house. It's a very, very high level. And it's likely because the schools are providing some devices to students who don't have them at home. Uh, you touched on uh, some of the funding to help educate people. Could you just expand on that? And what did you call it? Was it FCC or SC? I didn't catch yeah, it. So, so the, yeah. so the FCC, um, our national government, FCC, has a program called the Affordable Connectivity Program. And when people apply to that, if they meet the income eligibility guidelines, which is actually quite high, it's 200% of federal poverty guidelines. So a, a family of four making $50,000 a year is actually eligible for that benefit. Um, the benefit is $30 per month. There is no sunset date yet to the ACP for the ACP benefit. So there is, um, we're not saying, we're not seeing that this is all gonna stop in a year. Um, there's some discussions going on with FCC about blending it with the Lifeline program. So we'll see how that develops. I sit on a, a couple of committees with the FCC. So we get pretty up, you know, up to date information around that. But this benefit is a, you know, it's a great benefit. We, we, when a community decides, like a town decides to, to hold those classes, what we like to do is to spin it in the positive and say, hey, did you know you could get this discount? Who doesn't like a discount, right? And instead of, you know, sort of with the spin of this benefit is for families that are low income, because they're, you know, the more people in the household, the, um, the, the higher the threshold for the benefit. Does the uh, data that you were talking about, the census data or the other data, does it help identify who to reach out in terms of either older folks or, or families that would fit the uh, criteria that you described? Yeah, so when we get the data, we don't know who it is, right? And so, you know, you're not going to, we're going to know that there's a percentage of, for, for instance, a percentage of families that have family median income of $10,000 or less. We're not going to know who they are. And so part of the plan is going to be is, is, is creating a strategy to reach as many people as you can. And that could be in offering these classes, um, partnering with um, food banks or um, other organizations that are serving some of the more vulnerable populations in your community. Um, what did you say that the, the 200% of the federal poverty level is for a family of four. I just wanted to get that. A family of four on the, on, for, that is eligible for the FCC, it's $50,000 a year for a family of four. It's pretty just, high. It's pretty yeah. high. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to clarify for my uh, fellow members that the ACS, it's one of the things that the Census Bureau does. It's not the census form you fill out every 10 years. They're sending out questionnaires to random recipients all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, and they're a lot more detailed and that's what they collate as this ACS that Susan's talking about. Yeah, some of the new data that they've been collecting since COVID is remote workers. How many remote workers are out there? Mm -hmm. So that's been some interesting numbers to see too. Yeah, well, actually that's a, that's an issue that that's not in the plan right now, but that's that's yeah, that's something we got to think about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, most people on Social Security qualify for the that benefit. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much anyone who's on Social Security, SNAP benefits, EBT, any of the social service programs are going to be are going to be eligible for that benefit at the minimum. 
And then there's some providers that actually offer a $30 program, right? So in essence, the subscribers get, get a free program. That's true. There are some providers, not many in Maine, um, but there are some providers that are offering a $30 per month um, broadband subscription. I get a little bit leery because the speeds aren't necessarily the better speeds. And so then what it does is it, it keeps the um, low income homes not with the mo not being provided the most robust broadband that might be available out there. Yeah. Yeah, but the way you said it before, if you think of it as a discount, a discount doesn't mean it's free. A discount means you pay less. Correct. So, so Correct. you could, so for LCI, who obviously is our provider here, as you well know, um, the thirty dollars would be applied toward whatever is the cost of the particular service level you're getting, right? Correct, correct. So let's just say LCI charges um, $70 a month for a 100 meg symmetrical connection. <laughs> it's it's 89 for 100 down to 20. Yeah, after the $30 discount, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thir so no matter what the subscriber decides to sign up for for a package, it's going to be $30. So that's that that's going to come off no matter where they are in the the, the fee scale of right. lci there are some communities that are looking that are looking to raise funds for an additional subsidy for their um residents so if you take a 70 dollar um let's just use, we'll use 70 dollars as a a, um, a monthly fee for fiber 30 dollars on acp the community is raised and has some funds um, for an additional 30 and then the home is paying $10. And so there are some, you know, $10,000 can go a long way, you know, raising funds to do an offset for some home or some um, of your community members. You may decide that that's something that you might want to do or think about. Um, and, but then you also need to think about who's going to be eligible. Are you going to, you know, set the criteria so that, you know, it's going to be available to folks that are over 70, or is it going to be available for folks that have kids in school or, you know, so it's all, this is all going to be part of the process as we, as we think this through. I think in, implicit, although I wanted to make it explicit um, uh, in terms of cost to the community, if you could talk, you know, NDEC programs are free for Mainers. Can you just describe that a little bit? Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about NDEC and what we do and how we do it. So um, NDEC was formed in 2018. We raised about $5 million for Maine and its people. Um, we have, um, oh, as I said, over 40 classes that are available. They're broken into three different curricula. There's for classes that are um, for work and business. So all of the Microsoft classes, Microsoft Word, Excel, um, PowerPoint, Outlook, QuickBooks, uh, um, bookkeeping for small business, how to build a website for small business and manage social media. Then there's a, um, a curricula for home and education. Those are um, like when at the onset of the pandemic, we did a lot of classes for teachers and learning how to use Google Classroom and Google Meet, as well as for parents to help them with um, get their, their kiddos being online. Um, internet safety, we do a lot of internet safety, um, cutting the cord, um, that FCC benefit. And then the third is a curricular called Aging Well with Technology. And these classes are focused on folks that are 55 and older, um, how to protect your online presence, how to identify fake news, how to create safe passwords, um, internet safety, you know, specifically for folks that are older and many of them going online for the very first time. Um, we've worked with the Maine State Library and we do a class on how do you download books from the library and that's been um, that's been a, a real popular one with older folks. Um, we have uh, classes on learning how to use um, apps to manage your health care. Um, uh, there are apps to monitor blood pressure or 
weight or exercise um, um, or medication. Um, so it, that said, anybody can take any class that they wish and they can take as many classes as they wish. If somebody doesn't, um, if somebody is very new, we then refer them to internally um, and we have staff that will do individual learning plans so that we can get them up and running, get an email address, um, learn some of the basics, to get them to the point where they can join any of the classes. So there's a lot of hands-on with our instructors um, and, and because we don't wanna leave anybody behind. We had, we have a program on affordable devices. Um, the state of Maine grant, um, granted us about a half a million dollars during the pandemic to provide um, uh, tablets, some with cell connectivity for the folks that didn't have an internet connection, some with Wi-Fi, um, refurbished laptops, refurbished desktops. Um, we have a, you know, we for any any of the um, the students that um, are qualified for the devices, you have to take a number of classes in order to receive to to have to be able to own the device, particularly on the laptops and desktops. Um, we work with a lot of organization that raise funds to purchase equipment for their patients or clients or constituents, and we manage, manage those devices for them. Um, I think about one older adult organization down in Southern Maine that bought 20 iPads at the beginning of the pandemic and handed them out. They were in boxes, never took them out of boxes, gave them out to a lot of older adults who had never used technology before and everybody got lost, right? Because what does it mean when you turn on, I mean, an iPad, you turn it on, it, there's a lot of different languages that come up when you first turn on an iPad. And so we got them all back, provisioned them, got them out back out the door to their um, clients and then gave them some, um, some, some lessons on how to use that iPad. Um, so we, we, work, we work with a lot of organizations. We have hundreds of, um, uh, of organizations that refer people to us, just as many who work with us directly. Um, and, and we're small enough that we can be flexible enough to, cre to really customize programming as we work with organization to organization. Um, the big thing is on that, the, the uh, affordability, we're really, um, we're really making it a priority to reach as many people. Um, last count, out of all of the, I don't know, there was, it's not quite a million homes that are eligible in Maine. There were only 53,000 that had signed up. So we have a lot of work to do to get people on board. Um, we write the digital equity and digital inclusion plans as we're doing for you. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's what we do. We're pretty, you know, we're, we're a pretty robust organization. Our instructors are um, spread across the, um, um, across the state. And today we, uh, we um, hired our first out of state um, employee because we're also providing classes out of state. So, um, and, and anyone who's out of state, those are all billable services. They don't get the free classes. They, and so it's, it's a, one way for us to raise some program income. So, <laughs> Did you say a million homes eligible for the FCC? Yeah, it's really eligible. high. It's almost all of Maine is eligible. Can I ask one more question at the risk of over monopolizing? Oh, please. Um, you know, I think that we had Mark and Axiom advising us on our strategy. And um, I don't know if you know that where we landed um, was given our particular situation with LCI that our um, so, sort of uh, first preferred uh, strategy is a public-private partnership with LCI where we will be applying jointly um, with them for any monies that we would be eligible for, uh, you know, as a community. And as the um, main connectivity authority continues formulating its rules for different tranches of funding, 
we want to be sure we're paying attention, we're well informed, and that we can apply jointly um, with LCI for anything that would be relevant to us. So my question is, given um, that you know you are a, a real insider in this world with your finger on the pulse, is it uh, possible that one of the things you can also help us do is keep track of the things we could and should be applying for? You know, our our view is that, um, as I said, we want to do it together with LCI and. Um, we are we are presuming well we already know in some cases that um, preference is going to be given for public private partnerships for joint applications between towns and uh, Internet service providers, so we want to be sure that we can take advantage of that, because that is really the only way we can argue for better service better prices um for our constituents so we just need all of the help and advice that we can get about these um grant uh, or funding opportunities as they arise and my question is can you also be helping us with that yeah so full disclosure i am a board member of the connect main authority which is um not the main connectivity authority which is where all the federal funding is coming through but we work closely with MCA. I'm also the co-chair of the Digital um, uh, uh, Equity Task Force for the state, also under the Maine Connectivity Authority. Um, so, when you're applying, when when you're looking at at um, building infrastructure in a community, you mean you've done some you've done some due diligence around this you've come up with so the next real big big step is if you if it hasn't happened already is what is the budget. Um, identifying all of the homes that need that broadband connection so that you are aligned when the um, for the when the grant when you can start up when the grant rounds open and you start applying for grant funds, you have a budget and you have a plan to go forward. Anyone who has that is going to be at an advantage for as they apply for funding. Um, under, really understanding the unserved as well as the underserved homes in your community is gonna matter. Um, working co collaboratively with LCI is a good move, right? Because those public-private partnerships matter. When you're working with LCI, hammer out what is the what is the pricing going to be, you know, and where's is there negotiation around that? Um, take rate matters. So, if you think about digital equity, there's the altruistic side of digital equity. You know, we want to help everyone. Um, you know, our most vulnerable populations. We want to make sure they're connected. We want to make sure they've got devices. We want to make sure they've got the digital skills in order to participate in our digital economy. But on the flip side of that, and so I'm a chameleon when it comes to this. Just telling you right out there, right? If I've got a broadband provider in the room, I'm going to talk about take rate. I'm not going to talk about you know the altruistic side of it because take rate matters. The more people that subscribe to broadband, the, the better the take rate, the better the return on investment. And if the barriers for people sub, um, subscribing to broadband is because they can't afford it or they don't have a device or they don't have the digital skills, we can fix that, right? And so LCI, I had a call, I called LCI because I have another project that's an LCI um, community and had this conversation with them. And as soon as I started flip, flipping it around and talking about take rate, that because you want a high take rate for this system that's being built, right? It matters for everybody, right? The success of the project, whether you're using public funds, you've got to, you've got to make sure that you're, you're reaching as many people as possible. And if, if providing those digital equity or digital inclusion solutions help get more people online than you just then that's a win that's a win and and that's where i think working with 
providers and getting them to understand that because they don't all get it yet, right? But we're going to help them with that. Great. So what are the next steps, Susan? So the next steps, it, the next steps for us is going to be to do that deep dive on the demographics. We should look at, and you can, you know, if you don't doing that, we don't have to do it tonight, but if you want to send me this week, some dates, um, a couple of weeks, two to three weeks out, we'll have those demographics ready for you. And we'll have a, and, and we'll start to talk about those demographics for all of you. I think you need to start thinking about what is important. Who are your who are your most vulnerable citizens? What is there a target audience that you want to reach? Um, and so start to think about in terms of all of these pieces of digital inclusion, the affordable broadband, affordable equipment, digital skills training, and public computer access. Start to think about. Who are the populations that you want to make sure that we reach and we create that plan to reach that, that population? Um, and so that's just, you know, that's something that you're going to, I'm hoping as you're driving around or you're sitting at your desk, you're going to start to think about those things. And then we'll start to weave that into the digital equity plan. Well, since most of us are here, uh... How do we feel about Thursday, October 20th at 6 p.m., two weeks from now? Two weeks enough works for me. I'm good on that one, too. OK, so Susan, two weeks is enough time to uh, get the information? OK. Yep, it should be fine. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. It's not next week. It's the following. I have to turn my phone off. Yes, in, in two weeks. It's not next week. It's, yeah, yeah, not next week. Two Thursdays from today. Okay, great. I'll make sure I let the other committee members know. And then the other thing, just so that you, as you know, and 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 Steve alluded to it, right? That I'm a resource. I, you know, I've got a lot of information. I'm the former CEO of Axiom, so you know, I have a broadband background, and I have um, I have a a, a a deep knowledge of last mile and the challenges that come in. So I'm very happy to, you know, if you're if you if you need some um, advice or counsel, I'm very happy to do whatever I can do to help you move this all forward. Wonderful. Yes, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity for that because we speak about our collaboration with LCI, but I'm not sure they're aware of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing with LCI for all of you is ensuring that every every home is going to be connected and that what are the what's the minimum what's the minimum um, connectivity what's the minimum upload and download speeds and can everybody get the same level of service no matter what and and then what's the pricing around that and then what are they going to do for you right so you ask them i mean you're gonna you know you have to support a digital equity plan you know will they will they will they provide um public um hotspots outside community hotspots will they help with an advertising campaign to get folks um, um applying for the uh, the acp benefit that's going to benefit them because they're they're an acp provider Good. Okay. Good. Any Perfect. last words from anyone? It's exciting. Very it's exciting. More. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Susan, for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Good luck down there. Oh, well, thank you. And I look forward to talking to you all in a couple of weeks. And um, um, we'll have some fun doing this, I'm sure. <laughs> Great. <laughs> all right. You all take care. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. -bye. All right, so moving on to uh, agenda item number five, discussion about LCI conversation. Um, so there are things I can tell you, there are things I cannot tell you. What I can tell you is that the entire Lincolnville Board of Selectmen met with um, uh, LCI, uh, leadership at LCI uh, today at, uh, at 3 p.m., we got a tour of their facility, which is where are they? 
uh, Noble Pearl. Yeah. So we got to see all the all the switches and how everything connects together. They showed us um, spools of hundreds of miles of fiber that they have stockpiled. Um, and then and then we sat down and had a long conversation. Uh, and it was under executive session. I can say that it was uh, it was encouraging. Um, and so we plan to to meet with them in in the near future. Really? Um, but we but I'll say we talked about the grant programs and they're fully aware of everything that's available out there. And you know, we're we're exploring if if we can work together. That's kind of where where we left it off. So they've been reading our minutes. I don't think they've been following us. <laughs> I think they're too busy. All right. Well, I know in uh, you know they they recently uh, had collaboration with Hope for putting broadband in there yes. and and in uh, Apple Town, I think. Yeah, Hope, I think that was all one. one I don't know if it was separate or not, but in. Hope I was aware that I became aware that uh, you know there's an eight hundred and fifty dollar stipend for connection. Uh, was that paid for by the town of Hope? It's it's part uh, it's part of the program. I don't know I don't know where, but it's, it's part of that. So eight hundred fifty sub subsidy, or it costs eight fifty to connect. No, they they will they will provide up to eight hundred and fifty dollars of subsidy per connection, and if you're you know a mile down the road and it's beyond that, then you have to pay the difference. And also, there's a a fairly reasonable introductory broadband rate, and I can't remember what it is. Okay. Uh, I talked to somebody who had it, and I just cautioned them. And I hope it's not just a a initial. Bait and switch. Bait, bait and switch. Mm -hmm. you know, and because they mentioned the uh, CARES program that the federal government provided for the school kids. Mm -hmm. And that was a great program, but that was only a year. After that, the right. price bumps back up to uh, to standard. So uh, so that's a little flavor of something that we might be headed toward. Mm -hmm. So Josh, on LCI, I know you have to keep things today uh, private. but. Can you kind of share from the selectman perspective what the schedule is, what the goals are, what the time frame is, who's going to do it? Are lawyers involved? And like, what's what's it look like on the from the board level? Well, I'll talk about the the last board meeting we had. Um, I'm trying to get all my meetings straight. Basically, we agreed that all five of us should go instead of two representatives. Really, give a show of Unity. So it's showing that that this is the entire board. We're all interested in having this conversation with you. Um, and uh, and you know, if if there was money that we would be putting in, um, then we need to work backwards from town meeting and where where that would go. Um, there were questions about just the specifics of the grant programs that they've laid out the rules, but I don't think everything's been clarified. Um, but how are you going to fund? Like, is the entire board going to keep meeting with LCI, or are you going to? Yes, I mean that's my question. Is yeah. there a road? Is there a, we 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 designated the two of you? Yeah. Uh, as 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 negotiators, so we ignored that. So so <laughs> so then. Oh, we took it under advisement, but then decided. So the, if the if the select board is going to negotiate directly, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and then we don't need to be involved. That basically looks like where it's going. Um, but are you gonna for now, are you going to negotiate as a group? That's what I'm just feeling out. I can't really imagine that. But is that what you guys are going to do? That all five of you are going to sit down? And... Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. The next uh, we're we're waiting to. They need to crunch numbers. They need to do some background research, and then we're going to talk again, basically. Um, and what's the time frame for that? Like, is this something that will go on for months, or will it happen faster from your perspective? Or I think weeks. Yeah, weeks. Um, we can basically assume we won't be part of the the. the the next round of funding because it's due in like a few weeks. Um, there is second round, I think, in late February. 
um, just in terms of, of getting two, two groups together to formulate proposal, it just um, doesn't seem feasible. Um, but there are two rounds. Um, and so and so hopefully we would if if we work together, we would be ready for that that round. I mean, the big question, obviously, for us on the broadband committee is whether we have any role or responsibility uh, in, in in this in this next phase. Yeah. If we don't, that's fine. Yeah. And you know, I, I would be perfectly happy to accept that. Yeah. I just want to make sure that the ball isn't dropped somewhere. So if we're, you know, our next job was going to be doing this digital equity. Right. plan, which I assume we're still going to be going ahead with. Absolutely. And that the, is that is that is point. what we're we're okay. So that's we're, our main focus. Right? We're the point people on that. Yeah. So we will continue working with Susan. But it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we will not be responsible for actually negotiating with LCI, which really is applying for MCA or other available grants, because mm -hmm. the whole point was that these would be done jointly. Right. And if now the select board is going to uh, do this for each funding opportunity, because there will be multiple funding opportunities, right. it won't just be one go, there will be multiple uh, calls yeah. for... There's at least two rounds announced. Already. So I expect since given the amount of money and the complexity mm -hmm. that there will be multiple rounds. And if the select board is going to do it directly with LCI, that's great. Mm -hmm. But then I just want to take that off our radar because I, I was under the impression that we needed to keep track of this. If that's not the case, then that's not the case. But yeah, my my sense, and I can't speak for the board or know what, what decision we'll make later, but my sense is that the board, all five of us are really um, interested and engaged in this, and we will be talking with them in a matter of weeks, most likely. Um, okay. And so the next steps are happening, and David is is going to be in communication with them. So, for do we have any role in or advisement, at least in the parameters of what is considered an equitable deal, um, or is the board going to set that decide bandwidth and cost, and well, where does that come from? So. You know, at, as an advisory committee, I would urge us to, um, if we have a recommendation, even if it's unsolicited, to, to give that to the select board, you know, to not feel like we need to. Right. And we have our two representatives of the board. So I right. think that would be a conduit for conveying our position to some degree. Yeah. Now, okay. So keep in mind that, oh, was it last year? I think it was last year, the select board um, joined joined in with the other communities that are part of um, Midcoast Internet uh, on passing guiding principles. So the guiding principles that the whole select board agrees on is uh, we, we want to um, have a broadband system here that is 100 over 100, fiber to every home, no one's left out, uh, that's affordable. I think there's anything else. I think it was those. those okay, so those things are broadly defined already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so those are uh, those are you know important to the select board. Now, if there are additional um, layers that we want to convey, then if a majority of us want 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 to convey that, then I think we should. Uh, I I personally. Wish I could tell all of you what we talked about because this is the broadband committee. Um, I want the input of all of you on what we discussed. But can't for now. Uh, I'm not sure how that will change. You know, ultimately, if if there is money that is being requested of us, and and that that's premature to say if that's even something that would be asked. But obviously, that would be a town meeting, and so that would be a public discussion. Um, so the one yeah. piece I'm still unclear about, it, yeah. and I'm totally comfortable with you guys doing it. I think that's great yeah. in some ways that yeah. just gets us to streaming. Yeah. I'm not clear though on the fundraising piece. 
Um, so do you think the Board of Selectmen and, the, and David Kinney will kind of run with doing whatever needs to be done to interface with LCI and getting grants? Or is that uncertain whether that might be pushed back this way some? Like who's gonna do the work when there needs to be work to do whatever is needs to get a grant in and to um it would it, it would be a joint effort. LCI is a, is is looking at the grants and they're writing the grant proposals. Okay, so that's just the town doesn't that's just what they do. the town doesn't need to add that much to they just basically run with it. That's 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 what it sounds like. I mean they were telling us that a few years ago. Okay. Even. Um any and if they need any additional data um we said that we would we would offer that if that was helpful okay. um, but in terms of actually grant writing it i think they, they they do the bulk of it i think it's in their best it's it's in their financial interest to be doing that yeah. um, so of course so will the what we learn from the digital equity study will that play a role in forming the deal at all or is that, that just be sort of off to the side as a separate thing going on after I'm, I'm not sure. I think it should be considered. I, I think at the very, as soon as I mean, we have we, it, the select board should read it. Well, this is the take rate. If so, what she what she was just suggesting, if we come in and say we have a thousand people that we can add to your take rate, yeah. that's something that you know, you well, that's yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, how many? Because we have a million houses in Maine. You know, yeah, but <laughs> surely, like you said, we. We have an advisory role that we can continue to have. Yeah. We don't have to wait to be asked. Yeah. So when when the report is done, it should be presented in full to the select board, plus any comments we want to make. So if there are items in the work that we want to especially call out, or if we have ideas for how to implement some of these things, um, we are free to forward those. Yeah. That's all we would be able to do in any case anyway. Right. So it's really, that part's no different. To me, the part that's significantly different and in a good way, because less work is always better than more work, is the um, taking the lead on negotiating with LCI because frankly, the joint proposals would require uh, David Kinney to do the town's piece of it anyway, no. whether we were the negotiator or not, yeah. because in order for it to be an official town act, mm -hmm. it has to be approved by the select board, and then usually the select board asks the town administrator to execute the paperwork. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a very big difference, difference is, is that um, before hearing this, you know, we have a certain amount of expertise and we knew what we had to figure out. Now, I, I don't see us, unless we're given a specific task, um, I don't see us doing the work to add to the effort. You know, it, look at we're here. Like I said, there's a lot of expertise sitting around the table. If there's a question, we can answer it. But uh, it, it's, uh, yes, we can add comments, but I don't, I don't know what we're going to come up with if we're not actually doing the work. Um, I think demographics will be a good thing to be able to tell them about once we know that. But uh, yeah. beyond that, I have a feeling we're, we're done with uh, with the uh, the LCI and the granting and, and everything else. Well, LCI, of course, knows exactly what the take rate is right now. Mm -hmm. We don't. Um, so that gap and how that gap is filled in, I assume, will be part of the discussions that, that, that will be forthcoming. Uh, I'm encouraged that the whole board is, oh, me too. is, is wants to be involved. I, I would, that's a great sign. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think I, we're agree that we're all, yeah, we're all encouraged by, by, by this development because I mean, something's going to happen. Yeah. Something's more likely to happen than it was last meeting in July. Right. And then yeah. it gives us a tighter focus, which is always good. Right. Now, when, if and when there is uh, a deal or a proposed deal, uh, and we can make it public, I, I certainly, I certainly want the committee to, to weigh in. And then if the committee thinks it's an egregious deal, then we should say it. I, I think that the role of committee should be, 
you know, ask hard questions if they need to be asked. And if, if it seems like a select board is not, our select board is not having that conversation and not be afraid to, to really, you know, speak, speak to what we think is, is, is the right path for the town. Um, I just have a point of information about select boards. Yeah. Every select board member has a different term of office. Is that right? No, that is incorrect. They're okay. staggered. Uh, they're they're, they're yeah. staggered. And so a term is three years. Okay. And so, for example, my term is up the same time as, as Mike Ray. And Which then is, uh, next year. June? June? June. Yeah, it's always June. June uh, of 23. 23, right. Yeah, that's when uh, the two of you were at. Right. I think the year after that, that's when uh, Laidley and Kern are up, and then I believe uh, Steve Hand, uh, he's, he's his he's own the newest. year. He's his own year, and he's the newest, yeah. Okay, so June of 23 um, means that the current select board with the five people who are currently on it will remain until June of 23. Correct. Which means that we have a good long time to have this LCI negotiation. And hopefully, uh, I mean, I'm sure that there will be funding rounds between now and June of 23. Yeah. Um, and, and, and funds appropriated. Mm -hmm. So there ought to be, you know, substantive progress on this strategy of the public private partnership with LCI and to make bid a joint uh, 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 proposal to MCA for grant rounds. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, since you're all here, uh, I talked about the guiding principles that the select board has passed. Are there other, maybe we talked about this before, but just, just to refresh our memory, are there other points that the committee think are important to uh, negotiate on? Okay. Customer service. What are, okay, hold on. So customer service, can you expand on that? Well, you, if you go back to our survey, there seemed to be so much I don't know exactly what it was, but they weren't happy with responses that they were getting. Okay. I know uh, this is three or four years ago before they actually started broadband, but I know when I was trying to communicate with them about getting better broadband to my house, it was very hard to get anybody to really pay attention to you. So I, I would agree with that. Yeah, you, I, I literally had to point out that it was in front of the building that I was trying to get it set up for and that they should be actively seeking people to, to you know join the, the forces with the, the fiber optic it was right there and they were as surprised as anybody else and i just was really shocked that it, the, their business model for for um you know getting new customers wasn't that impressive the business customers which pay more money too mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, I think there's, there's, I think being a small company, it's easy for things and, and somewhat family run, it's easy for things to be a little bit less structured. Um, yeah. would, would you explain to me the difference between you can go telephone, high water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. there's, there's at least three entities there, yes. right? Yep, Are I they really so. all? The same thing. Yes. 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 I don't. I, I still struggle to understand why it's that way. They're all. It all has to do with I think your town. It may not even. It may even be divided between a town, like depending on where you are in the town. Perhaps they're all the same company. And when you go, when you like, if you just Google right yeah. now, Lincolnville Telephone, like pay my bill, it'll say which one of these logos is on your bill, and then click on this one to go pay. They really should streamline that and just have one company, um, but I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know if they're separate business entities or. I, or I'm cost pretty sure it is one. Of the, one of the companies. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I'm just curious when I see <laughs> this. Which are you anyway? Yeah, and, I and think, that's a, that's I think the other thing is all the data that they have that we've always said we wanted, which is who's got it, what's the take rate. Not, you know, do they already have the data on the? People that we're going to be talking about the next couple of months in this equity plan, because I could say it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, well, in terms of their their age and age, and you know, if, if they've surveyed people for why they haven't taken it, or do, do they have information that will help us try to meet the goal of getting everybody to have good broadband? 
perhaps after we meet with Susan in two weeks, we, uh, if, if there's data we don't have, yeah. we can um, make those a question. And send yeah, it. Be clear about that. Yeah. So would that mean a request to LPI for some of the information that they have? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If there's if there's gaps in what we yeah. we have, we'll be yeah. getting some information from Susan. But if they already have, if they've already kind of done what we're doing, yeah. um, or it'd be good to know if they haven't too, because yeah. then our plan will be informed by that. Right. Yeah. Uh, just on on Jay's question about who, why are these different entities? The the Lincolnville Telephone Company and Tidewater Telecom seem to both be owned by LCI and the difference between those two is geographic. Tidewater serves the Danvers Scott and Nobleboro area and Lincolnville Telephone Company serves the Lincolnville Hope Appleton Northport area and both of them are owned by LCI. About Appleton and Tidewater. Well, I remember my friend back in the day uh, in the high school uh, in Camden, his internet said Tidewater. Yeah, so. that's what my parents and law. Yeah, what, what, wasn't it a different? I'm not sure it was always LCI. Did they? Oh, maybe it was a different company entirely? Is that possible? I I know, L that LCI I came on last, I think. I'm just reading from their website. That's all it says. Hmm. It's a mystery. <laughs> okay. Other other points. It just that's that's great news. We're happy to hear about that. And actually, Josh, you've always done the best job of listing our criteria um, in the past. I'm sure it's in the minutes somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Okay. Let me just ask again. What do we think is a reasonable price for 100 over 100? What's the very highest you, you feel the town should, should be okay with? All in, that's including if there's a telephone what, line included or something. Yeah, it's, it yeah, wasn't 65 what-, what all, the, all in price. Wasn't Axiom's idea 65? Yeah. That sounds- $69 with nothing thrown on top would be a jump on that. <laughs> Okay. Fine. Right. I think no phone. I think no phone line is a good. Uh, or or the price the same whether there's a phone line or not is a good. Uh, Just as, a, as a point of reference, um, I'm looking at prices currently offered today from national providers. Um, uh, AT&T is $55 for 100 down, 100 up. Okay, one second. Uh, AT&T is how much? 55. These are national rates. Okay. And, 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 they, and they make a point of saying they may not be available in all areas and prices may differ in certain, differ in certain areas. These are national averages. Okay. Verizon is um, Fifty dollars to one hundred twenty dollars for um, speeds that are a download speed a low of three hundred, an upload speed a low of three hundred, and both of those, the high end is two thousand megabits per second download upload. So the fifty would be for three hundred, three hundred. Yes. Figured. Okay. Spectrum is. Um, $50 to $89.99 for download speeds of a low of 300 and upload speeds of 10 to 35. Um, and so, so it's $50 for 310. Is that what? Uh, Spectrum is forty nine ninety nine to eighty nine ninety nine, and the range is download of eight hundred to one thousand. Oh, upload range is ten to thirty five. Eight hundred to one thousand. I didn't hear you say that. Eight hundred. I think. I'm so. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Ten to thirty five is not a typo. 
and 10 <laughs> to 35 yeah. no, is in right. bold. Yeah. Right, sure, of course. Um, Google Fiber is ranges in price from 70 to 100. Uh, the 70 is for a low of 1,000. Oh my God. And uh, 100 is for 2,000. And what's the download? It's a, uh, the upload. They they only metrical? they only give they don't, they don't give an upload speed. Those are download speeds. Okay. No, so I'm I'm curious. Um, These are just advertised rates off the internet right this minute. I'm curious if they're for rural places with fiber in other places in other parts of of the country. Um, by locally owned utilities, what what are those speeds? Um, you're you're going to have a huge. I mean, this is you're going to have a huge map of patchwork of different prices and speeds. I think that the key thing for us is nobody that we have found charges as much for as little yeah. as LCI. So the what 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 I pay as their uh, first tier fiber package, which is what everyone pays, which is a hundred down twenty up, mm -hmm. is eighty nine ninety nine. Before the phone line. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's just the internet fiber. Yeah. That's on top of the twenty five hundred I paid. Yeah. to be connected. So that $89.99 per month is the highest price for the lowest speeds of anyone we surveyed. And it's certainly much higher than the national averages I just gave you for national companies. Even if that was 100 symmetrical, it would still be the highest, as yes. far as we know. Yes, right. yes. Right. Uh, uh, Steve, Michael, go ahead. Um, uh, where, where, do, where are you getting those numbers? Did you go to individual websites or is there, is there some place that collates that? Um, best, it was uh, cabletv.com, best okay. fiber right. internet providers for 2022 prices and speeds. Okay. Um, sure. And when you said highest price for lowest speeds that, that we surveyed, who, who surveyed? Well, this was before when we did our first um, uh, broadband study and we looked at, you know, selected um, providers and that information- oh, so we, it was, we was this group, okay. Yeah, but that information, information. Came, Yes, but that information in turn came from um, ILSR, the, Institute for Local Self-Reliance, mm -hmm. and also from, um, I'm not sure if it wasn't also the Island Institute, which looked at the state of Maine. So it was an earlier incarnation of this, of this group, yeah, okay. What I struggle with is, what if they give us half of what we want? Um, but on like a really big one, like price, for example, um, they won't change or it, it'll only come down a little bit, but it's the only option we have. And they would still, let's say theoretically, you know, we we could apply for a grant jointly and, and we hooked up everyone, every household, um, but only one or two things changed besides that. Uh, I think the speed is fairly well fixed by the government, so that can't change. Well, not by the government, but by the technology they deploy. Their you know, infrastructure. They could do, Google well, does well, but, they're not going to do but, that. No, but say MCA is declaring what the minimum acceptable which is connection is. Right. Which, which is 100 symmetrical. You know, so really, we can't drop below that and still meet state mandates. Really. Well, I think that the the point you're making is that in order to qualify for MCA funding, 
you have to meet the MCA guidelines. Right, and I'm not sure and if there's 100 a by fixed, 100 is one of those. That, that's a fixed thing, but I'm not sure they have a fixed price. Yeah, so is there an MCA? Not to my knowledge. Price? Okay. Not to my knowledge. Okay, that's something. The, that the speed is, right, the price right. isn't. But you know, I mean, since we're now relieved of the burden of having to. I'm sorry, I, my, my thing has a lot to do with this. Yeah. Please. And price wise. Um, so, how does the telephone fit into this picture in terms of people who live in Lincolnville are required to have a telephone? Is that going to continue? I mean, well, that's something that's something we certainly. I mean, would that be negotiable? Because um, you know, that's that's thirty dollars out of my bill or twenty. Right. No, it's it's absolutely on the table. Yeah. But that that should and, be. Reported. And I'm not sure that as a customer, you are required to have a, a in the prior regime. There, like I complained, and they removed my billing, but they still kept my phone. And the reason they do that is they're getting a, a, a subsidy because they're provide, pro, provider of last resort here, which is why they want to push that on to everyone because everyone who has that phone connection, they're getting money from the feds for it. Yeah. Uh, well, but that, that doesn't say that you have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and no, I, I don't know. Well, I, I'm not sure I understand what it even is. So they're giving people free telephone? The federal no. government requires as a matter of national security, every household in America to have a telephone. Have the option to have, have a telephone. The, have a, have a telephone signal. Just like electricity. And so every town, I think every town has has an ILEC, a, a, a provider of last resort, where oh. they have to be able to offer every house a, a phone line. Right. And, so, and the federal government pays $15 per household to the company to provide that service. So they're getting money from, so, from the government and they're getting money from you. So if Lincolnville so, so you got rid of it, your requirement to have a phone, they would still be required by federal law and they would still want to comply. So they still get the $15 per month. They could, let's say your phone bill is $30. They could get rid of your phone and stop charging you 15 additional, and they would just collect the 15 from the federal government for providing a signal to you, which you choose not to take. Yeah, that'd be a nice solution. Well, that yeah. would be fair. I mean, yes. that's okay. Yes. But that's not what I'm saying is they're wrapping it up in the, in the cost. Well, because like Jay said, you know, if, if you can squeeze more out of each home, then, well, so I like that recommendation that we understand that they may have to keep the subsidy, but they cut the cord in terms of us having to have active phones in our house and pay and pay for them. We don't want phones. Wait, wait, Jay, are you saying that you no longer pay the thirty dollars? The the uh... this this was several years ago. Yeah, I I put up a complaint, and and literally what they said was, well, we won't bill you, but you still have to keep your phone. So when we're all talking about said, 30 okay. bucks we pay, you don't, you don't, you don't pay that thirty dollars. Well, I do. It, it, at some point, it came back again, and I just. You know, <laughs> um, like, let's let's pause it for a year, and I know yeah, like, something. That. I don't know. Uh, just, and sorry. and the fifteen dollars, they only get that if you take their phone line, right? right. And they don't get if, that if, for every if, household. If, if, there's, if as long as I have a connection, I don't have to have a telephone plugged into it. I no, no, I understand that, I but, but we have to somehow say, yes, we'll take the service. And except for a brief period of time at Jay's house, they charge for that. Right, exactly. The thing I just built my house, which I did, and yes, I did put a phone line in because at the time I didn't know that we were even going to ever get fiber optic, and I was just going to keep what I kept. Mm -hmm. However, can they force somebody to pay to have a, a wire go to their house that they own? In other words, I had to go hundreds of feet mm -hmm. so I had to pay for that. Um, I mean, I know the conduit is going to carry the, the fiber optic, but yeah. why do I have to carry that other pay for that other wire? I mean, right. that's... Well, 
Well, when I built my house in 2015, uh, fiber was immediately available uh, on Ben Cycle Road. And I said, I don't, I don't want the phone. They said, well, you have to have the phone. And I said, okay, well, just put the jack on the telephone pole 300 feet away from my house and leave it there. And that's where it stays. Yes, and anyone who calls that number, I'm in the phone book, it'll just ring forever. But I didn't pay to run the wire. To wow, my house. okay. It's just fair. But you're still paying for the phone. I'm still paying for it. I'm still paying for it. So. Oh, yeah. That's a sucker. But, um, well, I, I wish I could share <laughs> yeah, well, what we I, talked we're, about. But. We're going to have to leave it to you guys to figure out, you know, it's a negotiation. So yeah. we've, to the extent that we've done our job telling you everything that we'd like to have, you know, you yeah. guys are going it, to have to But it's helpful to hear, to hear it reiterated. Um, I, you know, I don't think we're going to get everything we want. I do think there will be some concessions, um, mm -hmm. but there's no, there's no deal right now. Uh, well, let's move on. This is a great segue. We've, we've already been talking about it, the MCA grants. So um, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> well, it's, it's still good for us to be informed. Uh, there could be there could be input potentially from our committee that could guide the select board if there's a blind spot to us. Um, so my read of the it's like what four four different grant opportunities. Um, my read of it is that the Reach Me line extension would be the only one that really makes sense for Lincolnville to mm -hmm. to extend because all the all the middle miles, middle miles done yeah. as far as as far as we know. Um, and so the Reach Me extension is is it says pro program description. Reach Me will optimize broadband deployment by incentivizing internet service providers to complete their existing networks by extending service to all unserved locations in their service areas. Reach Me incentives will fund line extensions to locations that the MCA has determined are most likely to be cost effectively served by the expansion of existing networks. Now, I don't I don't know for a fact that this. What's more about this? How much is it, and what's the timeline? Okay. Uh, there's another page for this that, that has all that information. Oh, okay. Um, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Twenty million. So it's it's, it's the least thing. amount for now. Um, and it says it has to be a hundred over hundred. There's a cost share. It's a, it's a minimum of $700 per premise uh, match that either comes from the ISP or from the town. Um, but so the timeline, the timeline fall of 2022 for request for qualifications. And then the proposal timeline is winter of 2022. So Based on That's what Jay said about his friend in Hope, right? Who was getting eight hundred? So I thought, yeah. Okay, close enough. This is seven hundred, so that makes sense because that would be the matching, yeah. right? The part that doesn't make sense to me is the hundred over hundred, because, to my knowledge, that's not even offered in the people. Some people have 100 over 100. They do? Some people. It's, you need to request it. So Doesn't Jordan have a... Yeah, Jordan well, Jordan's a special case because, because he's doing some pilot program with them. I think he's getting 250 over 250. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, mine, you know, is um, more than one year and less than two years old. Yeah. Because that's when I finished this renovation that I got it. Where I paid the twenty five hundred for it to go down the driveway, mm -hmm. and then I bought what was I thought their best package. At least that's what I asked for. Yeah, and that was a hundred down, twenty up for eighty. They don't tell you that it exists. Oh, yeah, they don't tell you. They don't tell you. Oh, so kind of like the thing you discount, you have to ask for. It's a handful of people. People look at me and they know. <laughs> A handful of people that have it. I don't even know. I know my neighbor has it. Is it because they can't support that if everybody wanted it? Is that probably no comment? Yeah. I said no comment. Yeah. Some things I okay. Can't, some things I I okay. can't disclose. But, but just my point about yeah. this, right? Just yeah. reading what you just read. Yeah. 
the criteria are 100 over 100 yes, and 700 matching. Okay, and one more, which I'm reading here. So yeah, this is moot, obviously, if, if LCI can't, can't, do, can't do 100 over 100. Yeah. I'll just say we discussed this one. I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Um, affordability. Okay. So uh, the prices for service offerings must be equal to or less than the price per subscriber location offered by the involved ISP elsewhere in the state. Involved ISPs must participate in the FCC's ACP program to meet federal requirements and a service level of at least 5010 must be offered to those eligible for LCP ACP at a price that is fully subsidized under the ACP that is currently $30 a month. So my read of that is they must be right. offering a free 50, program. 10 for 30. Well, for, for well, that is fully 30, subsidized. Okay, 30. Getting the 30. Getting 30, okay. Yeah. Uh, finally, the price for 10 over 100 over 20 must be equal to or less than the federal reasonable comparability benchmark for broadband rates. Yeah, which they wouldn't need. Right. Do we know? So if I were LCI, I would say we can't apply for this one. You town of Lincolnville, you know, can apply, but we can't fulfill this. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a town can apply without an ISP. Right. Well, unless we get LCI. I'm sorry, I missed that. First of all, do we know what that 120 benchmark is that, that they referenced? Is there a number? I don't know the number other than to know it's not 89.95. What is it? Yeah. And, and what were you saying that that we can't, I, I couldn't get, understand your comment. That, they, that, 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 that based on this criteria of 100 over 100, 700 matching, and um, uh, uh, the national um, uh, right. price, average price, um, LCI would not, to my knowledge, be able to meet those conditions. But aren't we? negotiating to get but, them to but we're getting but we're negotiating to get them to so if they which which is why this would you know would be our only um sort of salvation because if we can get them to agree to this it's better than much better than what we now have available and but it goes back to your point if there's money available why wouldn't they want to increase their capacity because their cost of, of 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 meeting these criteria is greater we don't know that though. then no but that would be the business reason is you would do the math and you would say do i come out ahead or behind well i think steve Hand mentioned that the uh the calyx equipment that they have is fully capable of doing symmetric connections 100 over 100. okay and if there was a constraining factor it might be some of their other back in trunks or or something maybe they couldn't support it fully well i mean i think the reason they're not offering it i mean you know josh knows the real reason but he can't tell us but <laughs> my guess would be that, that you try to tease it out of them, right? the reason they're not offering it town-wide is because they can't physically offer it town -wide. they just don't have the infrastructure well, like you well, said let me just say that they are looking into all of the grant opportunities. So I mean, they see the same criteria we do. Right. Oh. I mean, so it is free money. The national okay. benchmark number exists because people are making money charging those rates. So there's no, you would think. Presumably. I right. Would be able to. But anyway, since it's not our problem, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's too it's too bad. You know, so, so number two performance standards, hundred over hundred, like that is a, a negotiating point. Well, we don't even have to negotiate it. It's like if you want to apply for this, it's a condition. To, I just wish that one of the conditions was also affordability under sixty dollars a month, but it's not. It's no. It's whatever they did there. say you you have to uh, participate in the FCC uh, ACP. Right. Right. Fifty right. ten. Which yeah. Susan already mentioned that they are. Yes, yes, are yes. Yeah, 30. No, the question is how much above that do they charge? The, the $30 is a discount off there's, of the yeah, it's, it's confusing. It's like two things that are similar. Yeah, there's the $30 discount. Right. And then there's what this is saying. This is saying it, the, the, it'll only cost $30, meaning it's free right. for right. that family. I just want to make sure we all understand that. 
Read, what, read again. For 50, 10. 10. For 50, 10. 50, 10. So the 100, 100, it says it can't be higher than what they charge anywhere else. Is that what that? By, by the involved ISP elsewhere in the state must be equal or less. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Right. So that's not getting us to 60 unless they happen to charge 60 somewhere else. Well, that's interesting because I, I was at, I don't know, years ago, they were having, LCI was having a big little promotional event. I don't know why I was there in Rockport. And they were and they were offering rates and the rates, I'm pretty sure, were cheaper than what we see in Lincolnville. Um, again, it's it's they would have to meet this thing. But I'm I'm curious what their rates are in other towns. Not Appleton and Hope, but in but in other like Camden and Rockport have LCI. Like what are their or Nobleboro. Or Nobleboro, right. Because but again, my yeah. reading of this is that if it's less than eighty nine ninety nine, then they can't they have to it has to be less or equal to, to that one. So Remember eighty nine minus eighty nine minus the phone line. I mean I well I'm not 100 100 but. no mine is an addition mine is 89.99 for the internet plus 15 for the phone line yeah, mine is exactly. but uh again well, what's important here is is if the grant has already set the bar where where we thought we would have to negotiate you know they've taken that off the table for us if, if well that was exactly and that was the whole reason why getting mca to, to include in its conditions all of these things was so important for the state because otherwise every little town in Maine of which there's some incredible number like 1100 um, would be you know towns of 200 people would be going up against these big companies trying to negotiate first of all they don't even understand or have the sophistication and secondly they have zero negotiating clout right so, so so that's why the MCA is so important, and, and at least in this first uh, uh, or this current round for twenty million dollars, which is not that much, considering that they're going to have two fifty total, at least. So it's it's a relatively small amount. It remains to be seen what their conditions will be for the others, but this is certainly a good. So, so I just I just quickly looked up for LCI Rockport a hundred. It says 100 fiber internet, but assuming it's 100 symmetrical, 69.99. It's 69.95. Okay, it. But it but it just makes me curious. Like, um, are we reading this the grant correctly? Because if that's the case, then then if they want to apply, it has to be that cheap, right? Yeah, that's what hopefully that's, that's what the text says. But which doesn't surprise me because the state the MCA has promoted affordability as one of the pillars of, of its of its program. But I think they've figured out that it's very hard to def put a number on that that's going to pass muster across all the all the combinations of systems that there are in the state. And so they may have just obtusely correlated it to well they so this, else. this this rule almost looked almost feels like it was written for Lincolnville mm -hmm. because Lincolnville is, is getting the 89.95 years Camden 69.95 so something that something well so so, so the really question is Good. left to ask because um, we, it sounds like universal access um, a 30 the existence of a $30 plan um, we don't have to ask that anymore. We're not sure if we have to ask for a rate or not based on, you know, the select board will have to do or somebody will do a little research and figure out if the number that they are held to by the grant um, is a number that we like. Uh, but <laughs> you know, what is left for, for us to ask? No, no linking of the telephone. That would be the only thing you'd be asking. Or yeah. is there anything else? No, which is the, which is what's great. And, no, and I'm then, just for clarity, what is left? And is that the only thing? The only leverage we have is that we do it together with you. Um, you know, if you agree to play by these rules. I, right, but I thought it, else like to decouple the phone line. <clears throat> yeah. That's the only thing we got, I think. The only thing that's left on our That's list. great. <laughs> yeah, <that's great>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just for you know, as long as they want as, as long as they want to work with us i mean the fewer things that we can ask for that are outside <laughs> of the 
uh, preset conditions, the better. Right. Because, the, and that was the whole point of the MCA rules. No, no, no. I understand. I'm just saying, just for clarity on our own side, is there anything yes, left? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that's the only. I, I just think we have to insist about the phone line. I don't think yeah. they have a legal position where they have to force everybody to pay that. Um, we need, need Dave here to, you know, for that. But I would, I would doubt that they could, you know, so withstand a, a, a real challenge to that. Mm -hmm. Question about uh, these grants from what you, you've all read. On the affordability, if, if that fourth point means they actually have to drop their price, is that only for the locations in the town that are part of this grant? Or does it apply to everyone in that town? That's a very good question. That's a pretty so important what, point. I would imagine it only applies to the, the subscribers. Right. I don't think I get a rebate. Right. <laughs> but why wouldn't you just kill your service and start over again? You know, they, oh, oh you're saying only if they extend the line under this program. Oh, yeah. okay. right. So, so we do have an ask, right? And, and they're going to say it's only available to those not currently receiving it. We'll say that's a deal breaker. Well, why don't well, we say Josh will put on his negotiating hat and, and right. here we go. I love that it's not our problem. That's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite outcome of today. Yeah. Are we? Did, did you want to? Uh, did you want to see the mapping stuff I did? We can hold that till next time. Um, why don't you show us next time when there's more more of the board on uh, the committees here? And, and it'll also be interesting because we'll have some of the digital equity stuff too, and yeah. it right, yeah. might mesh right in with that. Yes, well. I think that will, that's wonderful. And by the way, that's also a value add that we can provide, you know, to the select board and to LCI, just to show um, and, what we've come up with. And to Susan, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, well, moving on. Any action items? Can't think of any at this point. <laughs> uh, my life's got so much less. <laughs> we have so much less to do now. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there was one thing I needed to do. The the select board. There are members of the select board that were um, disappointed in some of the errors in the in the report. Axiom report. In the axiom report. Yeah. Um, it's identifying towns and typos. So I'm going to take take it upon myself to go through the document and correct it. Thank you very much. Mm. Well, uh, I need to get need to do that. Um, Is that a you thing or a Mark Will that thing? I'll just do it. Let's get it done. Uh, okay. Any non agenda items? All right. With that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make such a motion. Second. Motion moved by Jay, seconded by Cheryl. Any discussion? All right, call for a vote. Michael, how do you float? vote? Goodbye. <laughs> Cheryl. Jay. Yeah. So long. Stephen Wave, I'll pick that up yeah. yes, and I vote yes too. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us, Michael. You, oh, you bet. It makes it so much easier to type if I'm not sitting there. <laughs> <laughs>